Coming from the Caveman Studios in Buffalo, New York. Welcome to Caveman Corner with your host, Jeff. Captain Caveman! Thanks. Click subscribe and the bell. Do it now! I'm here with the one, the only, Coyote. Jayo, Jayo, Jayo. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Kyle's been in China, um, almost on like a, you know, learning to grow, growing to learn over there, running the gym. How's it been over there in China? Uh, it, it's uh, ever changing. I don't know how to say it. it it's, um, it's, it's still different. You know what I mean? I, I, I came back home. For this brief time for this fight, man, and um, it, it's just it's still night and day for me. I don't know. Uh, I I love both places, but this is uh this is definitely home here in New York. What's the time difference? Twelve hours. And when did you get in, man? You look exhausted. Well, thank you. It's nice to see you too. <laughs> now, <laughs> um, I got in the. The ninth, eighth, and ninth. Nice. So you've been here quite a bit of a while. I know you've been training here. <clears throat> Minnesota for for uh for my daughter's birthday. My my wife and my kids are in Minnesota with my wife's family right now. Nice. I came to New York very quick. Went to see them. Then I came right back here on the twelfth to get ready for the fight. Nice. Um, how did you end up coming in from China to fight in? New York, that's uh, quite a long trip to uh, just battle it out. Well, it's uh, the first ever cage fights in, in my hometown. You know, like Attica, New York uh, is a very small community, and um, I had the pleasure of growing up there. So when I hear there may be a fight there, I felt like, like I needed to be involved, and uh, the stars aligned. You know, it was just... There's a lot of different reasons for it. Um, number one is uh, a tribute to to my my coach, John Cook, the the recently deceased uh, great man, and uh, basically doing like one more memorial fight for him. And when I say one more, that's reason number two is I get to retire finally on my terms. Uh, I haven't fought since my kids have been born, so now. Uh, this can be considered uh, finally my last one officially, I guess. Uh, the fight gets done, I can take my gloves off and lie them down and uh, walk away and feel good about everything I've done. It's nice to be able to retire in your hometown. Yeah, man, that's crazy. Like, I, I really, it was uh, it, it was illegal in our state, as you know. Like when when we started, I mean, it was illegal here. So to go from from the beginnings here and then the full circle all the way around the world, come back and have my last one be here. I mean, it's really funny. Basically where the cage is, uh, where the event will take place, maybe 100 feet from there in my childhood was the place I first got punched in the face <laughs> and maybe like uh, the other direction in like a, like a triangle. Uh, about 300 feet was the place I threw my first ever punch, like across the street. So it's it's uh, it's nostalgic to say the least, and and maybe even a bit serendipity. But you know, it it just makes sense. So here I am. We tried to do this podcast Monday. Uh, it didn't work out. We had technical difficulties, and I couldn't make it Tuesday. Like, man, this has been it's been a uh, a long time coming, but I really want to have you on. Um, I got my start doing podcasts. I got my start uh, like really knowing what fighting was. I, I feel like uh, commentating it all. It all comes to you, and um, I know like this is a retirement fight for you, and I know it's a big deal in Attica, and I know everyone was happy to have you back, and I know how much like the community's helping out in Attica, and they're donating the money to like the, the fire department and there's all kinds of good stuff going on. So I definitely want to have you on and like, it's an honor to be part of anything that you have to do. Uh, and to be part of your last fight, like even just having you on the podcast feels amazing to me. Thank and, you. Uh, Appreciate that very much. I, um, 
you know, I, I've, I've been there at your fights as well. I, I've uh, had the honor of calling you when you got the scrap, and, and I've also had the honor of sharing the booth with you. So it's very much, uh, like, like I said, the, the, this whole crazy circle of life and like, like evolution that is MMA for all of us athletes or, or former athletes, it's, uh, it's wild, dude. I mean, I remember the first time I actually met you, you and Ferrant were screaming behind me at a kickboxing fight in Tonawanda. And you were actually screaming for the person who was beating up my student at the time. And I was like, <laughs> what are these guys? And I remember I started like, talking to these guys. Like, I don't know what's going on here, but I don't have to be this aggressive. And yeah, I mean, years later, it turns out to be you and Keith. <laughs> and it, come on. Uh, so, yeah. And yeah. It, I'm very happy to be part of the ride. And, and now it, it, it's strange. Like, like a big part of it for me is going to be different and, and done and closed. But I'm happy and I'm ready for it. Um, it's just one of those things, I guess. I mean, like, I, I, I can equate this to, to to quitting smoking cigarettes. You know, for a long time, I smoked cigarettes like, like, like before MMA, all that stuff. I, I used to be big into it. And everybody kept telling me, oh, you have to quit. You have to quit. It's so bad for you. It's bad for your health, all that. I never thought twice about doing it until I actually wanted to do it. And then, like, when I wanted to be done, I was just done. And it was cool. And same thing with, with my MMA career. There's always going to be people that support you and uh, who are happy for you when you win. You know, they want to criticize you and coach you when you lose, all that stuff. But there's always people that are going to tell you to quit because it's bad for you. You know, and, and they're not wrong. Um to a degree for, for, for life that they're, they're not right, you know, but now that I'm ready to, I, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with it. Like, like I'm ready to be done. Just go on and start coaching and uh, focus on uh, other people who, who want to, I guess, help evolve the sport and, and help it grow and, and help it continue. Then I'm, uh, hopefully there is some kind of a guidance. You've been coaching for a long time. What what changed that makes you want to retire now? Just like banging out all these guys and seeing all the young faces, or or just the wear and tear, or the family, or well, I mean, uh, mainly for me, it's it's the kids. I don't want them to see me fight. Um, two is like there's a as you know that there, there's a UFC Performance Institute in Shanghai where where, where I'm based at. So, like, you know, now and then I'll go and I'll spar with these guys. Like, if they have fights coming up, I'll go in and do some rounds with them. And um, even when I'm in my best shape, man, like, you know, like, like these kids are doing stuff that, like, you and I would have called gimmick moves back in the day. And it's just part of like, the normal regimen now. So, the, the, there's been a definite step forward in, in the sport of MMA itself. And, um, I, b between being a dad and a business owner, I just don't have the time to keep up with that evolution anymore. Like I, I don't, I, um, I still have the desire to, and like, like, like the, the, the wants to, uh, have all these, uh, moves or, you know, tra transitions are in my repertoire. But the reality is, I'm not jumping or moving the way I did five years ago, 10 years ago. So that's not going to get any faster. So now that I'm able to present myself with uh, some kind of a shell of what I used to be, you know what I mean? Especially in kickboxing. Like I can throw down kickboxing, no problem, three rounds. Let's go out and put on one last hurrah and uh, put one more feather in my cap tribute to my coach bang it out treat somebody like crap for 10 minutes of my life and then come on with it how old are you Kyle? i'm 40 years old now i just turned 40 last sunday oh man happy birthday you're still young thank you <laughs> man wait till you hit 45 it gets worse and i'm 46 it just really starts going downhill well, thank so. you 
Are you uh, going to go back and you're going to continue coaching China or are you back here the same? Oh, I'll, I'll go back to China after the fight. Um, I have at least uh, another, probably another two years there, at least, maybe more. Who knows? Probably not more. Can you, can you see the comments? You guys are similar. I can tell I came up in the same fight time just by listening to him for five minutes. <laughs> I can't. I can't see any of the comments now. Yeah, so the comment is, you guys are so similar. I can tell you came up in the same fight time just by listening to you for five minutes. It's true. It's very true. It's very true. I told him, I tell everybody all about the Herbert stories all the time, so they, they know. <laughs> Eric, Eric will be in my corner for my last fight, actually, and it, it was a, that was very important to me that he's in there. That's awesome. Well, it, it's, uh, you know, we, we started doing this before it was cool I, I don't know for some reason at that point to us it was cool but uh it, it really wasn't mainstream as of yet so even though we are not the original like og og we are for our area mma og so it's like <laughs> now every everybody kind of like laughs at us you know they, they're all like boomer jokes and conversation <laughs> Dude, that same thing is true in the gym, and it, it, it that's when it really sucks and it really like, like gets close to home. It's like I'll be moving with these dudes and uh, a couple of these younger guys, especially in China. I'll be switching stances, moving forward, even like like over rotating my hip on purpose, and still just like that far away from touching their chin, that far away, and they're just kind of smiling. It's like ah, oh, you little prick, like. <laughs> I know you know that I know, and that makes me hate you even more. <laughs> I uh, feel I feel your pain, man. I feel your pain. It's uh, it only gets worse after that. Exactly. So, and that was a good time to hang them up. I'll put on, I'll put on one more good show. Uh, somebody I know very well. Uh, I, he's gonna come out, man. He hits so hard. That's that's what sucks. You know, wouldn't that be the worst? Like, like my retirement fight. Never been knocked out. Watch my last fight. or get bodied in like a minute. Watch it happen. Yeah, I think you're a little bit too tough for that. I know Izzy's like, man, Izzy's got cannons in his hands, but you got that extra, like, Attica, extra hydro <laughs> brain in your butt kind of. Uh... <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see. We'll see if that takes over. Let's hope it does. Yeah. I'm a... Uh... I'm so excited that you're you're gonna do this, and um, I'm so glad you came home and you're, you're here for the Attica show. I talk with Dan a lot, and I know how important it is to him and how important it is to the area. And that you came back for it is something special, man. And I hope this event is everything you hope it, it is. Thank you. I appreciate so, that. Go ahead. No, no. It's, it's I was amazing. like, how are, how are, how can fans get uh, last minute tickets? I also know, so if you get general mission, bring your own seating as well. Yeah, it's <laughs> wild at it. So, uh, you know, it's, it's crazy. Like, they had uh, boxing fights, apparently. Like, like right about where we are, uh, close to the train tracks, like, almost 100 years ago. And now we got cage fights a century later in the park. Um, there's still going to be tickets available. I have, like, one table in my uh, in my coyotes corner, I have, I have one table left, and I think six general admission tickets left. But there, there, there will be more available at weigh-ins, and then more available at the door for uh, for people who are lazy and just don't get their stuff done on time. Just show, up. <laughs> but whatever, we're there, we're doing it. Guys, so, if you get tickets from Kyle. I'm sure Kyle gets a significant kickback for the tickets, so make sure you get them from Kyle. Please support your hungry fighters. He's got kids, man. He needs the money. Right. Oh man. I'm so sad they're not here. That does suck. That that sucks. But so is this an exhibition or is it a pro fight? So because of the rules in our great state of New York and this athletic community, this has to be an um, I'm sorry, an, an exhibition kickboxing. Initially, we wanted a pro MMA, but due to all these 
red tape and commission uh, regulations, it would have been a lot more heady than it was worth in the end. So just to be able to fight at home, uh, we had to agree to this. But as I said before, it, it's not going to take this thing off any of these kicks. You know, like mm -hmm. it's... It's, it's still going to be something like, like both of us want to do it. And uh, it was a joke, but it, it's one of those. How do I say it? it's 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 like a joke right when you're done sparring. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, I love you. I, th this is a hug, but it's a hug. Like it's, uh, yeah. I know you understand what I'm saying. It's very hard for me to articulate what I'm trying to to actually word out, but man, it's no, we, we both want to do this. Um, I think for individual sake, for, for a favor to each other and also the, um, love oh, for man, you're very popular. <laughs> yeah. Getting get the call. Hold on. Um, uh, I'll try and uh, put into words what Kyle's saying. So, when Kyle says it's like uh, like serious but not really serious, that means as soon as the punches start, it's going to be very deadly serious. So it's like two guys that like to punch each other in the face for fun. Uh, yeah, we should do this. It's going to be really fun. And then when you get in there, it's going to be a real contest. Like no one's going to back down. You're going to go 100%. You're really trying to make each other look bad, but you're doing it out of love. And those are some of the best fights that you ever see. So. Like if you think Forrest Griffin, Stephen Bond, or fights like that, those are the kind of fights that Coyote's talking about. So, man, uh, if you can get tickets to watch that, it's going to be worth it. I can promise you that uh, Kyle is a special kind of person, like uh, like the same kind of special I am. So, like, I love it. Definitely more special. You're way tougher than me, for real. I don't know about that, man. <clears throat> I don't know about that, but thank you very much. I definitely know about that. Kyle, um, Kyle's a pioneer, and uh, he went for it all. And he went to China for it all. He, he made a living over in a foreign country, a communist foreign country, and he's an American. He's doing very special things, and people like you need to be celebrated, man. And uh, I don't think you – you really don't get the accolades that you deserve back home and uh people forgot about you you know but i never forgot dude you're uh it's because you were in ohio so long i think if you would have stayed in buffalo for all that career before you left people yeah. know who you are i bet you you're just popular in ohio but um new york needs to remember you too well i appreciate that very much man and honestly like it was a very difficult decision for me to make and i remember i i was at victory mma uh you know with eric herbert uh don lily tommy neff I was very happy. I, I I was extremely happy. The uh the thing that scared me was that I felt like at the time this was a young man's game, you know, and I was already starting, I guess, late according to the average. So uh, a big part of me had to uh get where the competition was, you know, and, and at that time you go to Ohio and there was a fight every month. Whereas if I'm in New York, maybe I'm waiting Half a year, eight months, who knows? And we're going out of state to fight anyways if you're a pro. Like, there's, right. it was illegal. People don't understand, man. Like, the times are so different now. Right. So, I mean, that, that, was, that was my big thing. And, I mean, not only that, but uh, it, it was just more difficult. I remember at the time I was working at a karate dojo, you know, to kind of help like, pay my bills and everything. And I was, I was actually living with a Pistol Pete. I was living with Pete. And, and Pete Mazio getting a shout out. Right? Yeah, dude. Pete Pence. We uh we, we were getting a good training and everything. It, but it just got to be to a point where uh, I, I was so focused and so obsessed on this. Like, this has to be my job. And uh, the karate dojo wasn't paying enough for me just like to basically live and train everything that I need to do. So I got an offer from Ohio, like, you know, if, if I go there and I'm at this gym, uh, free training, you know, they'll help me find fights, I'll have a place to live. 
So yeah, let's do this. Let's let's um let's see where this road goes. So we did, and uh, wow, and here we are, like uh, twelve years later, thirteen years later, fourteen. Damn. No, we're four. old, dude. It's got to be more than fourteen, right? Yeah, fifteen years later. Yeah, holy shit, we're old, old. How did you make it to China? So I never really heard the story how you got to China in the first place. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so it was, uh, 2000, I want to say 12, I had a nice little hot streak going. Um, like, uh, I, I was at, at Evolve in Ohio, putting in my work and doing everything. And I was, uh, having a pretty successful couple of years. Um, I got invite from this guy from Ohio who who is already in China to come out and basically it's like they like try our hand they like, you know they like, do it three months see how you like it we'll have some kickboxing fights MMA fights and uh, initially it was like cool you know I'll, I'll go see where my kickboxing's at like check my level with people who've been doing it their whole life so I went out initially for three months um, I was courting Rebecca Heinzman at the time, <laughs> so you know, like uh, I invited her to come out as well. And she also came out and got some fights with me. And uh, yeah, we went for three months. I think we had like in that short amount of time, we had like five or six fights. And we ended up coaching classes at the gym. People liked us a lot, so we came back again for another three months and uh it just really it was crazy there were times where i was fighting twice in a night three times in a week you know whereas in america i was waiting one month two months three months to fight i don't know i was trying to get my work in i guess you know so uh china started to make sense very quickly and all of a sudden, it's like one month. I have like six fights. Like, that's crazy. And uh, I, I was cool with that. I was making money. Uh, I found out not as much as I should have been. You know, we, we have a whole tumultuous, scandalous story with all our managers and everybody that we uh, uh business partners with. But regardless, we... um. After that second three month stay, we decided to come out and just make it a permanent home. And uh, yeah, just kind of had a gym fall in our laps, and we, we we continued with it. And here we are, nine years later. That's so crazy. It's like such a love story too. Like yeah, I, man, it's so awesome watching you guys get over there, and like you see the love and like all the fights that you guys did together. It was um. It was inspiring at the time, man, and like I was so happy that you're living your dream, and I kind of lived through like your posts and stuff. So I was excited that you were over there doing something. Like it's amazing, like what you can do when you just go for things, and it's so inspirational, man. And I'm so glad you're coming to Attica this Saturday. Well, I'll put it on the line. So make sure you guys go get some tickets for this FCP putting a show on in Attica. Crazy dude. This would be my 30th overall kickboxing fight. Damn. Yeah, 30, 30 kickboxing fights, 40 MMA fights, four boxing, four Muay Thai. And I include all the Sanda in the, uh, in the kickboxing, but yeah. It's, uh, yeah. That's quite the career, dude. I can't believe that you're going to lay him down, man. Like, even now I'm 46. I was like, man, I wish I could do one more. Like, Wait, it's all, it never goes away. Hey, I know, you know, you, you were one of the names that came up. Like, yeah, I know. I, I started training for it. I was like, oh, Tao's not fucking around. Uh, it'd be a good one. So I better start getting in shape. Yeah, you, you, you were a name that was us around. And I was, I was thinking about that too. And I was just like, man, I, uh, I don't even know like where I would go with this. 
you know, I, I really, I didn't know when the, when the idea first started, like what direction it would be. Cause like I always had it in mind for everything, but it's like, as soon as it was mentioned, like being in New York, like, Oh man, the like, caveman's around the corner. Like, <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? It's just one of those things where it's like, I, I, I got to call this dude. I got to get hold of him. So I got to see what's up. Um, if we fought each other, we have to have Eric uh, switch corners every round. Right. right. <laughs> no, I was very collective with my corner. Um, I, have, I have three in my corner right now. One of them is Eric Herbert. Uh, the other one is Darren White, who was my very first. Uh, he was, of course, my very first fight that I had, but he was the reason I started really in MMA at all. And then uh, John Cook's son, Carter Cook, will be will be my third corner. And so it's very uh, very meaningful. Get to get to lay my gloves down and and looking looking at. Look at my coach's eyes, I guess. So, it, yeah, it's a pretty big deal. So, I don't think most of my fans are going to know who John Cook is. Um, can you explain the relationship that you guys had? I know how important he was to you, and I know that he passed. And I know, like, I don't want to, like, bring you down. If you don't want to talk about it, I understand. But I think it would be a great, great little segue. No, uh, so, John, John was a... Uh the founder of Evolve MMA in Ohio, in, in Medina, Ohio. And um, that that place, I don't know how else to say it. It, it was just like, uh, you could walk in there and, and everybody, everybody, there'd be like 30 dudes, 40 dudes even, like around your weight, ready to spar. They look like beasts, you know, and like more, everybody's puffing their chest. But it's like, when John came in, I always called him our, our artful Dodger. You know what I mean? Because there's orphans. There, there's like all these little Oliver twists running around. You know, like, like John came in. And it's, everybody wants to pay the artful Dodger. You know, the, the, the pop of bear. Yeah. It, it, it was cool, man. Like like he, he got everybody in line. And like a bunch of egos that we had. You know, myself included. And everybody wanted to do their own thing. Everybody had their own ideas. And everybody had their own ways of getting better. But he, he somehow managed to get like this crazy. It was, it was basically a small army. He got like a, like a small army in line, and man, once we once we were together, it was just it was unreal. They, some some of those uh, training sessions and months there and stuff were unreal. It's like I I, I really don't even have words for some of it. Um. The talent that came from that room and on all the accomplishments that came from that room. It's just insane. And and this guy was the main reason for it. And, and the cool part about him was like <laughs> you, you you can meet this guy and the first five minutes you met him, you hated him. <laughs> you want him in the mouth. You 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 just wished he would die and get away. And then like if you gave him another five minutes after that and you listen to his apology or like his reasoning for whatever just happened before that in the next 10 minutes, he's the best man at your wedding. You know, <laughs> he had this crazy inane ability to just infuriate you and then make you love him so quickly and fiercely. So he had this whole gang of guys behind him and just, man, the uh, like, like I said, there's like thirty to forty of us there, and I think we have a, we have a picture a, a still of sparring, and we did a tally one day when all of us were together, and it was like in this picture of thirty guys. There's like seventeen gold belts, like like twelve UFC fights, like nine Bellator fights, a couple uh, World Series fights, like just King of the Cage. It, it's crazy. But yeah, John brought us all together, and it's just wild to think of that like, one guy can do that. There's so many domineering different personalities who didn't know any better. So this one is for him. 
Because mm-hmm. Izzy and I were two of those delinquents, so we'll fight each other to uh, to honor John and, and uh, you know venerate him and his memory. Uh, his his daughter will corner Izzy. His son will corner me, and um, yeah. That's crazy, man. There's so much respect between you two guys and so much love. And, um, man, when you talk about, like, normally when people talk about love, they don't think about fighting. But I know, like, that love is going to bring out a great fight. And both of you guys are going to leave it in the ring. And he's going to try and knock you out to make you look bad, but in a loving way. And I know you're going to do the same to him. And, man, it's going to be some artful violence with a lot of love behind it. And you're going to see those, like, little looks in between that, like, only two really great training partners can have. And uh, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. I'm excited for you, man. Yeah, I, I am too. You know, it's, it's weird. It's like, um, because I know him so well, there's a weird comfort as to where, um, you know, I'm not looking at a film or anything. Like, like I don't need to. I know him very well. Um, this fight's at welterweight. You know, I spent most of my career at featherweight. So <laughs> I'm just eating all the spoils of Western New York and just getting fat a little bit, padding up for this fight. Um, like, it, it, if I'm being completely honest, I'm not going to be throwing the flying knees or elbows at his face. I'm not trying to cut him. You know, if I stagger him, I'm not going in for the kill. But my God, you best believe I'm trying to hit him hard. I, I, like I said before, man, it's just it's what he's one of those guys where it's it's him and I. We love each other, but one hand washes the other. You know what I mean? Like so, he hits me. I'm gonna hit him. It's gonna go back and forth and escalate. And the problem is, he's very good. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're neither of us going to want to like be the loser. Neither of us going to want to back down. So it's going to be um, just just like how it always was when we got together. You know, and, and the only people who really win are the ones watching. We talked about earlier off air and just about how uh, John would bring people in just to watch you guys spar. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't know if you really wanted me to talk about it, but I feel like a perfect time to uh, talk about that. Like. The sparring that you guys had was so good. I remember him talking about it when I came in and sparred with you guys down in Ohio when I was getting ready for my fight, too. Thank you once again for having me down there. And, uh, man, like, there's, there's something special that's going on in that cage. And it's something special for Etika. Like, listen to Dan talk about it. Like, this show is huge. I work for, like, a rival. I work for K4. And they just had their show. But this, this is, means so much more to me than, like, any gym, any organization, like none of that stuff matters. Like it's about, it's always about the fighters mm-hmm. and uh, you're on this card and there's another young kid, Mason Lewis fighting on this card. We sponsor him. We gave him $200 uh, at K4, came to K4, $13 in his pocket. He just jumped on the card. And so like I raised a bunch of money to give away bonuses for like submission of the night and like fight of the night and all kinds of stuff. So I got, uh, I gave away $800, like, 200 of it was my own money, you know what I mean? Just to, to give away money to people. Hey. And uh, he was one of those guys. And he's going to be someone special, too. He's going to be on this card. Uh, uh, Daniel Baker, he fought on uh, K4 card. He's going to be on this card. Uh, there's some South Towns MMA guys fighting on this card. They're going to be on this card. There's so many good fights on this card. And you're the headline. So, man, the, the fans can't miss out going to see the show in Attica. I know it's a far drive for a lot of my fans. But, man, take your time. Go see this fight. and. Get the table from Kyle, man. Hook him up. Got to feed his kids. Yeah. They're good. They're good. But yeah, it's going to be a nice event, man. I'm, I'm very excited to do it. How long are you in town for? Um, I'm leaving the day after the fight. I go back okay. to that sucks. I wish we could get some time together. I want to call another fight with you someday before we're uh, old and dead. Oh, that'd be great, man. I'd, be, I'd love to do that. I'm uh, I'm getting some practice. I, I'm getting really good at not saying things you can't say anymore. <laughs> uh, no, man, I've seen some of the work. I've been listening to you know some of your uh, your your past portfolio, and there's nothing wrong. You're doing well. You're doing it. 
Like, You're like, you can't say that. I was like, what do you mean? Rape choke? You can't say rape choke? He's rape choking him. Sketch. A little sketch. A little sketch. Oh, that's so wild, man. I miss you so much. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, man. No, my pleasure, man. Thank you. This, this is wonderful. I'm so happy to be a part of the scene still. You know, it's uh, it's nice to feel relevant after all these years. Dude, the other day I was sitting around and uh, you know how Facebook brings memories up. And that time I came on your podcast uh, was just up on my memories like just weeks ago. Oh, yeah. 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 That was the first podcast I was ever on. And now I've done like almost 200 myself. And uh, <laughs> holy cow. Wow! So different. Yeah, man. I, I was just gonna comment on the uh, the, the 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 first um commentary get together. That was uh, was that the, the fire hall and um, yeah, North Tonawanda. Yes, thank you. Yeah, uh, was that when Bubba and Mickey fought, or was that when uh, or Bubba and uh, Keith fought, or was that when Keith and Mickey fought? Can't remember what show that was that we called together. It was Pat Mix in the yellow shorts. I remember that. It was Pat Mix's first TNT fight. Bellator superstar. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Million dollar man. Million, he won a million freaking dollars. I forgot about that. I forgot that we had actually called one of his fights. Yeah. Wow. I made fun of his shorts in that fight, too. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Tatiana are in town too, man. They're uh, they're. I'm not sure where they are right now, but it's just his birthday yesterday, so they're up in town too. Good on him, like, breaking it to to WNY. Pat makes you're a beast. Much love. Five eight five and four seven one six. Thank you. Yeah, dude. Awesome. And Tatiana, like the two best grapplers in two divisions. Like he's got. I think he's the best thirty five pound grappler in any UFC or Bellator. And uh, I think she's the best 15 pound female in the world. Like her grappling is so good. It's going to be interesting to see what the next few years hold for them. Yeah, I would hate to watch them fight. <laughs> the household's probably not that serene. Ish. <laughs> they better not have to win that tournament, but yeah. Yeah. Oh man. I right, see. So Coming to the fights on Saturday, right? Uh, I'm going to try and make it out. I have my picnic. I'm going to try and make it out. I'm probably not going to make most of the fights, but I would like to make it out for your fight. So I'm going to try and like scoot in and uh, catch your fight, but I'm probably not going to be there for most of the fight. So uh, I, I really want to see Mason Lewis fight too, but I, there's no way I'm going to make it out. I'm going to be at my place of four. So by the time I make it out there, like the fight's already been underway. But um, man, I, I, I can't make it out any earlier than that. I don't care because you're the main event. You're the only person I really – Honestly, I love everyone on the card, and I want to see all the fights, but, like, th there's only one fight that's emotional for me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really, like. Thank you. I see fights all the time, man. Like, it takes something special to move me, you know? Well, come say hey to me when you get there, right? I will definitely. And uh, I'll buy a beer after the fights or something, man. Like, I'll do something for you. Um, Is your girlfriend still fighting? Is Rebecca still fighting? Or is she, uh. My wife. Your wife? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, your wife. No, um, she hasn't fought since we have had kids now. Yeah. Has she done done too, or is she, like, looking for a retirement fight? Well, uh, as of, I mean, she, she got a hurt shoulder. Her nose is messed up from, from her last uh, fight in 1FC. And then she had the two kids. But we have talked about it. And, I mean, it. it's not out of the realm of impossibility. So it's we'll, – we'll, we'll see. If you get one, she's got to get one. That's how marriage works, though. No, I, I kind of actually figured that would be around. Uh, <laughs> but I was mildly expecting that, to be honest with you. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, if you need anything while you're in town, man, let me know. I appreciate you taking your time to come on here. I know it's late for you. I know, like, you're training. Uh, so I got some training with Jacob Bonin, too, man. Yeah. I like that. Uh, that guy's a stud. Hopefully he can make Bellator. Like, um, he's the, he's. He needs to uh, get some sponsors behind him, too. We're going to try and pump him up a little bit. Okay, man's corner. He's a super smooth fighter, really, really technical guy. Uh, really great down-to-earth dude, too, you know. So, like, uh, I really hope uh, he finds his stride and get some big success and get some sponsors behind him. Like you said, if that dude can just train, he's going to do our area proud, man. 
He really will. I agree. I, he's got so much better. Like every time I see him, he's better, man. And that's like that's what it takes to be great. And uh, I, I didn't mean to talk about someone else over the top of you, but like uh, it's cool that, that he he got it in. I want to give him a shout out every time I can. Um, thank you so much for coming on, Kyle. And uh, I will see you Saturday. And man, stay safe, stay strong, and uh, steal those gloves after you lay them down because you definitely want to take them home with you. Those FCP guys I always want their gloves back. Captain K Man and friends, thank you for your time, man. Coyote, peace out. Later, man. Thank you for having me.